Hi, and welcome to lesson 11.2, which is on making inferences from a random sample. Uh, inferences, we're going to be working on that word right there. So our essential question, how can you use a sample to make inferences about a population? Okay, our explore activity number one, using dot plots to make inferences. After obtaining a random sample of a population, which was talked about in 11.1, you can make inferences about the population which means from there you can uh, be able to describe that population. Random samples are usually representative and support valid inferences, which means the, those descriptions of that population are true. Okay, in our uh, situation here, Rosie asks a random sample of students how many books they had in their backpacks. She recorded the data in a list. So. A student had two books, another student had six, and zero, oh, one, zero, four, one, four, two, and someone had two books in the back. Make a dot plot for the books carried by this sample of students. So we're gonna order the data from least to greatest. So we see that the smallest number is zero and the biggest number is six. So we go zero to six, and we place a dot above each number on the number line each time it appears in the data set. So we have two happens, uh, how many times? One two, three. Two happens three times. Zero happens once. One happens two times. Four happens uh, twice. And six happens once. And we should notice that the dot plot you puts the data values in order. So it, it does organize them as well. So let's reflect on this. The critical thinking part, how are the number of dots you plotted related to the number of data values? Okay, so as, how is that related to this? Well, they are the same. It's the same data. Each dot represents one data value. It's another way of looking at the data. It's organized now. That's the advantage to this. And in class, we're going to be talking about no students in Rosie's sample carry three bucks. Do you think this is true of all the students in the school? Be ready to explain that in class. Okay. Draw conclusions. Complete each qualitative inference about the population. So these qualitative inferences are these statements here. So complete these statements. Most students have at least one book in their backpacks. Yeah, that's that's true. And as we look here, they have at least, most students do have at least one book. Most students have fewer than five books in their backpacks, which is true. Most of them have that. If I did that, that would be all the students would have fewer than uh, so seven, I guess, but we're talking about most. And most students have between one and four books in their backpack. Most of them have between one and four. Yeah, that's just about most of the data. Let's analyze the relationship. What could Rosie do to improve the quality of her data? Well, she can increase the size of her sample, which is to ask more students, get more data, more students, how many books do you have in your bag? That would improve the quality of her data. It would make it more valuable. Okay, our explore activity number two, using box plots to make inferences. And box plots were discussed in sixth grade, but you're gonna be reminded of them here. You can also analyze box plots to make inferences about a population. The number of pets owned by a random sample of students at Park Middle School is shown here below. Use the data to make a box plot. So a student has nine pets, another student has two, a student has zero, four, six pets, a student has three, another student has three, a student has two pets, and a student has five pets. Order the data from least to greatest. So I, I will do that. And so we have what, zero first, and I'll cross that out. That's always valuable to do. Two and two and then three happens two times, four happens once, and then five happens, and six happens, and nine happens. Okay, so I've, I have all the data right there. Okay, so I will zoom out and order it, got it. Then the least and greatest quantities, the median and the lower and upper quartiles. Lower and upper quartiles can be calculated by finding the medians of each half 
of the number line. So if you remember, the median is the middle number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is the median right here, which is right here. And this is this is all of the data rewritten in order. And uh, the lower quartile is, you have to go, you know, do not include the median. In the lower quartile, it's the lower median. So here we have four numbers. The, the lower quartile is running between there, which is still two, because you add them up. Two plus two, and then uh, you take the average of the, the middle one. So it's two plus two divided by two is still two. And for the upper quartile, it's the upper median right here, which you would get is five plus six divided by two, which is 5.5. Our greatest value is nine, and our least value is zero. And these zero, two, three, 5.5, and nine, these are the numbers you use in your box and whisker plot. Zero is the end of the whisker on the left-hand side. Lower quartile, two, is the left-hand side of the box. The right-hand side of the box is the upper quartile. And the line in the middle, or the line inside the box, I should say, it's not always exactly in the middle, is uh, three, the median. And the greatest value is the right-hand side. The whisker extends to the right-hand side. So we draw the box and whisker plots, and finally the whiskers, and I just explain that. So let's reflect and draw some conclusions about this. Complete each qualitative inference. So uh, we're making some statements based on this right here about the population. A good measure for the most likely number of pets is three. I would say so. That's right there in the median right there. 50% of the students have between zero and three pets. Here's an important inf piece of information. Here, this is the median. That means half the data is above and half the data is below. Here, this is, this is the median. This is the lower quartile, so the bottom 25%. So this is 25% of the data, 50%, 75%, and then from here to here is 100%. So this represent inside the box always represents 50% because this is, goes from 0 to 25, 50, 75, and 100. So this is the middle 50%. This is the bottom 50%. This is the top 50%. So 50% of the students are between 0 and 3. That is correct. Uh, it, almost every student in Parkview has at least one pet. So yeah, they almost always have m at least one pet. Okay. So next is using populations to make inferences okay you can use data based on a random sample along with proportional reasoning so you're making a proportion here two equal fractions to make inferences or predictions about a population a shipment in example one to a warehouse consists of 3500 mp3 players so that's before uh, iPhones and such. The manager chooses a random MP3 player. The MP3 players, they play music, if you didn't know, because that was a while ago. Uh, so a manager chooses 50 at random and finds that three are defective. So three don't work. How many MP3 players in the shipment are likely to be defective? So we can set up, uh, it's reasonable to make a prediction of the, uh, of the population because the random, uh, the, the sample is random. So that's an important component. It has to be random for this to work. Let's make a proportion, which is two equal fractions. And here we'll have the defective ones out of the entire sample size. So three out of the 3,500 right here. Oh, I'm sorry. Three out of the sample, sorry, 50. So three out of 50 right here uh, equates to how many in the entire population? And I'll zoom in on this here. So three were defective out of the 50 in the sample so how many in the entire population and we will then solve the uh the the proportion now what they decide to do is they decide to see that five times seven is 35 notice that so 50 times 70 is 3,500. Well, if you multiply this by 70, then this has to be multiplied by 70. So 3 times 7 is 21. 3 times 70 is 210. And that's how we can get our answer. We could also do this. And I'll zoom out for this. 
So we could cross multiply three times 3,500. That's, um, let's see, that's 7,000, that's 10,500. So if I multiply these two, so 10,500, and I divide it by 50, I would get 210. So, and, and an easy way to divide these, these zeros can cancel out. And I really have 1050 divided by 5. And look at 5 goes into 10 two times, and 5 goes into 5 one time, and 5 goes into 0 zero times. So there you go. You can do it without a calculator. So based on the sample, you can predict that 210 MP3 players in the shipment would be defective. So it's your turn. What if, how many MP3 players in the shipment would you predict damage if six MP3 players in the sample had been damaged? Okay, well, before there were three that were damaged. So this time there's six. Now, one way to think about this is, well, if we doubled the number that are damaged from three to six, then for the entire population, we could just double that number. 2 times 210 is 420. And think about that. Double the 2 is 4. Double the 1 is 2. And double the 0 is 0. So there you go. Or you could make another uh, proportion here. Once again, 6 out of 50 equals x over 3,500. This is just like this. These two are very similar. And I cross multiplied. I got 21,000 divided by 50 is 420. So there's two different ways of getting the same answer. Let's reflect. Check for reasonableness. So is our answer reasonable? Well, we could see that six is a little more than 10, six is a little more than 10% of 50. Okay, so 10% of three, okay, so how do we know that six is a little more than 10% of 50? Well, let's see, 10% of uh, 50. 10% of 50 is simply five yeah it's definitely five ten percent of fifty is five so six is a little more than five and which is ten percent of fifty and we see we're looking at ten percent because t taking ten percent of three thousand five hundred is super simple just knock off a zero knock off a zero now you have three hundred fifty and 350 is four hundred twenty and four hundred twenty is a little more than that so yeah that sounds reasonable to me. And that is what you have to know about populations, making inferences, and these random samples. Okay, thanks for watching.